More of the same and even better coming up for you in just a few minutes. Your commentators, Lee Diffie and Neil Crompton. Ten laps today for the third race of the Qantas V8 Supercars. We had a ten lap of Friday, nine team laps yesterday, and that was the outcome, as you just heard Kylie explain. The two Team BOC Falcons, John Bow, Brad Jones on the front row. Greg. More than a bit of spring in Brad Jones' step, uh, I can tell you, Lee. I've just walked off the grid very excited after yesterday. And uh, they're actually toying with a few things in that car today in preparation for the Clipsal 500. Brad's running the full cooling system. Also, too, the 51 car. Expect Greg Murphy to pit very early in this race. They are also treating this third and final one as a full test in preparation for the Clipsal 500. They're going to affect some changes to that car, send Murphy out again, and then make an assessment on, uh, on the reaction. It has been an eventful weekend for the V8s and there have been damaged cars. There are teams that have an extra workload in the next fortnight as they prepare for the Clipsal 500. Warm-up lap underway and boy is there an air of excitement and satisfaction in Brad Jones Racing for Team BOC after their brilliant 1-2 yesterday. If you missed the race we do have to say once again they were on slicks while everyone else was on drives but nonetheless a terrific performance. He rang me twice last night to tell me how good he was at tossing the coin. <laughs> you know, but in fairness, uh, motor racing can have its tough times and you take them any which way. And they made the brave call. They had not much to lose from it. And there's Greg Murphy in car number 51 at the back. And as you heard Greg say, they'll use this opportunity to do some testing and assessing of that vehicle in preparation for the opening round of the V8 Supercar Championship for 2005. Clipsal 500 in Adelaide. John Bow will lead the field. A little reverse of colours across those cars if you're having trouble identifying cars 12 and 21. Red bonnet for John Bow, white bonnet for Brad Jones. There's Mark Scaife. He'll be quick. So too, Marcus Ambrose. Didn't they do a great job yesterday yeah, yeah. nursing wet weather tyres in tough conditions? Here is how they will line up on the Talon Tough Tools scoreboard. John Bow, Brad Jones, Mark Scaife, Marcus Ambrose. The first two rows of the grid race three of the supercars. Take a look back to Russell Ingle and Craig Lowndes. Craig was a super mover in the pack yesterday. Will his Triple Eight Falcon allow him to go right to the front? We'll find out. Right and Jamie Wincup. Great to see some fresh names up there. He and Will Davison were the two standouts yesterday. Steve Ellery and Rick Kelly, who worked his way through traffic nicely yesterday. Bargwana, who was in the wars in the original race, had a good day yesterday. Yeah, good recovery for him because he was in terrible trouble after the first race. And to end up up in 12th placing is a very strong performance. Looking further down the order, Greg Ritter with Ford Performance Racing for 2005. Disappointment for Cameron McConville after qualifying so well and looking like he was in good shape this weekend. He'll be down in 20th. Glenn Seaton in his first weekend, the new team, the Queensland-based West Point Racing, formerly Dick Johnson Racing, of course, it's still the same organisation. And Stephen Richards, who was the fastest in the very first session this weekend, and has been at the front, has his work cut out for him today, and it has not been a satisfactory debut for young Andy Jones. Not his fault. He's just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Daryl. Paul Wheel's car is out of this race today, Lee. They spent till 2 o'clock this morning working on that car, stripping everything off it, and it was at Den Car at 8 o'clock this morning to try and get it ready for Adelaide. That's the kind of work we're talking about. Unnecessary work that some of the teams have had to go through in their lead up to the Clipsal 500 in just two weeks' time. Made mention, Daryl made mention of Dencar there before, and uh, those guys are responsible for a lot of the shell construction, uh, the body shell construction. They've been very well known and uh, very successful at that business for a long time, and so they've got a, a jig there. They crunch out the uh, cars for Holden Motorsport and Holden Racing Team and the affiliated teams. And, uh, that car, they've actually been in the wars a little bit in that organisation in the recent past. That car's in good hands. They need to focus now on Clipsal, so that's who Den Car are, if you're wondering what that reference was. One of the new cars you may have seen just go through shop was the Autobahn car for Alex Davison, part of Perkins Engineering. And he and his brother, a welcome part of the V8 supercars. And again, just uh, confirming this is a non-championship race as it traditionally is. No points, no championship points. That all kicks off in two weeks' time. You can see that live right here on your home of Motorsport Network 10. It's always an eagerly anticipated event, the Clipsal 500 in Adelaide, on a brilliant, the brilliant street circuit. If you're 
anywhere off the first few rows in this race, Lee. It, uh, it's a bit punishing on uh, day three, race three, because there's not a lot to be gained in this relatively short race over a long lap, and there's a lot to lose if you damage your car. Having said that, very rarely do you come away from here without a lot of damage and a lot of aggravation because once the lights go out and the racing commences, the, races, the racer gene kicks in with these guys and away they go. Not a championship round, but still a serious motor race, Greg. The word on Alex Davis, the word on Alex Davison's car post yesterday was no component dramas with that car. It was a, a, a late a brake lockup for him, and they replaced the uh, the front, a couple of steering arms and the like, to uh, Andrew Jones's car down at Gary Rogers Motorsport. He's okay too. So the final few lining up at the front. This will be an intriguing battle. Can the Team BOC guys hang on? Brad Jones and John Bow at the front of this pack. Scaife and Ambrose have shown incredible speed. And car number 16, or is that 15, will start from pit lane. I think it could be Rick Kelly. And yeah. I understand that there's a likelihood that we may see Greg Murphy back there as well. And as I said before, there are various people who will treat this in a uh, test session manner. There's Greg's car at the very rear of the field. He'll have to wait for everybody to go by and then exit pit lane after the entire field has passed that exit point. It's going to be short, sharp and fast. Just 10 laps of the Albert Park circuit. The same distance that we completed on Friday. It was almost double the distance yesterday, but this is one just to whet our appetites for Adelaide and give the fans some excitement. Team BOC 1-2 on the front row. They launch here in Melbourne, and look at Ambrose, rockets off the line, gets in front of his teammate, passes escape, and Russell Ingle barges his way through. Brad Jones got a poor start, John Bow okay. Look at Wincup up the outside, tries to round them up, couldn't quite get there. No contact in turn one, everyone through cleanly, and John Bow is the man they're chasing. Sometimes the outside move could work down there, but you're putting your faith in people to make a clean exit off the corner. Bow leads them into turn three, Ambrose a good start, then Ingles, Scaife, Brad Jones, Wincup, then Jason Bright, the usual congestion in turn three. It was two corners after that yesterday where all the chaos unfolded, just here on the exit of turn five. Everyone crossing their fingers. Alex Davison in a little strife there with Paul Morris, but they argue over position now. They get through cleanly. This is a good sign. But what about the two Stone Brothers Falcons? Boy, were they aggressive off the line and fast. Ambrose and Ingle launched themselves, got by Scaife, got by Brad Jones, and now they hunt down the oh, race leader. Jamie Wincup will have had the biggest scare of his life on the exit of turn eight. Then he had the thing in the grass, sideways, gathered it up, and managed to get out of trouble. It was a Kimi Raikkonen repeat. Morris and Davison still fighting over ground. And look at this, Ambrose, not wasting any time. Muscles John Bow out of the way. New race leader, the Pertec Ford is there. Greg? You mentioned about Jamie Wincup there before, Neil. I've just been down and had a word to Wally Story and the team. Boy, are they pleased with this young guy's performance. Ex-Formula Ford champion. Had a little bit of a struggle on those wet tyres yesterday, but they are watching this guy and very impressed with his first outing with this team. As Russell Engel stuck his nose up the inside of John Bow, Mark Scaife said, guess what, I'm coming through as well. Now Brad Jones is trying to work over his teammate. John was uh, very compliant there to those key guys in the opening couple of corners and... Uh, Almost contact between the two BOC cars there at turn 15. It looks like uh, John has got a bit of a problem because, oh, Bradley, and we've got one of the better electrical cars is off in the kitty litter down there. I think that's Stephen Ellery. It looked like 88. Yes, it is, because Lowndes is still up in his position right behind Jason Bright. Look at these two guys go at it further back. Wind Cup is putting the pressure on now. Deep in the brakes into turn one. Wind Cup and Brad Jones go side by side. Wind Cup loses out, comes back on. Oh, almost collected by Aguana. It's a very awkward move that happened there several years ago. I've forgotten who the players were, but when you come back on there, escape down the inside for position two underneath Ingle. When you come back on and rejoin it too, you've got to be so careful you don't swipe everybody. A little bit of weirdness there between John Bow and Brad Jones in the last couple of corners of that opening lap. John was struggling, maybe had a little problem, now rectified itself, and the net result is that Brad Jones really got caught up with his own teammate and lost a good 50 to 75 metres there. Watch the start, watch to the left of your screen. Second car from the left, Marcus Ambrose, beautiful start. His teammate follows him, they split the pack. Scaife couldn't do anything about it, and Ingle, in fact, contacted Brad Jones slightly, muscled him out of the way. This will paint the picture beautifully. Brad Jones, the real loser in the moves off the start there. Four cars had gone by him, 
by the time they grab third or fourth gear and there's wind cup down the outside he's got the front right tire locked and uh, like i said when you're on the outside there and almost three cars wide you're putting your faith in everybody else to behave he was lucky to get away with it that time that's the incident with stephen ellery left beached Gee, I've been impressed with Jamie Wincup this weekend. He's not afraid to mix it with the big boys. Here he is again, going blow for blow with Brad Jones. It didn't quite work out, though. The road ran out. Yeah, he actually made a good decision there, didn't he? Just cleared a bit of space because otherwise it would have resulted in contact. Wave yellow flags there. So there's an issue in the field of dealing with. Greg Rust. Just been down and had a word to Roland Dane from Triple Eight. Says that uh, Stephen Ellery's a pretty disappointed camper at the moment. I'll leave it to it, boys, and I'll come back to you. Round goes the 45 of Tony Longhurst. He's beached. And uh, Paul Radisich was the other car involved in that in the Team Kiwi Racing entry. And Radisich going for the pits. Lounds on the inside here. The two Ford drivers going at a blow for blow. The man who used to be in the Cat Ford, now in the better electrical one, he's there. Craig will be getting a bit of satisfaction out of rounding up the Cat car there. I'm sure he was committed to that manoeuvre no matter what. Greg. My question to Roland Dane was two pronged guys. I said, what happened with Ellery? He said he's just disappointed. Someone punted him off. But I said, all right, give us an assessment of Craig Lowndes' car for this race. He smiled and said, very good. You don't often see Roland Dane smile in that way. Craig May made up a huge amount of ground and numbers yesterday as he carved his way through the field. Fastest man on the racetrack to Mark Scape with a 159.9 on the last lap. Half a second behind Marcus Ambrose on the control line last time round and closing, although Mark was very sideways then as he came out of turn seven. Well, for the Red Army here in Australia, the fans of the Holden Racing Team, they'll be relieved to see this. This is Louds on your left versus Jason Wright on your right. Wright, he tried to fire him into the pit lane down there and Craig ultimately ended up far enough along and Jason wisely just yielded and the two of them managed to sort it out between them when they got down there. The two guys at the front of this field were the two at the front yesterday. It was an Ambrose Scaife race until the dry weather tyres, the slicks came into effect for Team BOC, who incidentally are maintaining a very strong position in the top five. Bow is fourth, Brad Jones is fifth, Lowndes, then Bright, Barguana, Wincup and Rick Kelly. Notice that Brad Jones' car's got the windscreen wiper going at the moment. I can't imagine he wouldn't have had, had time to turn it off. Might have a little electrical short in there. That's just triggered a memory. We must amend that, must correct that. That was, in fact, Garth Tander who started from pit lane in front of Greg Murphy. So it's been frantic. Like they all have, Friday's race was very enjoyable. Yesterday's was interesting. Now look at this. Holden v Ford, Scaife on the inside. Gap closing, Scaife right in touch. Marcus just making sure that he gets in the right place down there. He's under attack. Scaife will try and crisscross through turn two. It might ideally position him. It does. Good move, Mark Scaife. The two of them side by side. Beautiful racing and that engagement there has allowed Russell Ingle to come into this as well. It slowed Scaife and Ambrose up a little. The enforcer has arrived on the scene. There's extra support from Stone Brothers Racing, but can they go with Scaife? It's unlikely. He has been fast. Greg. Well, they're pushing the Team Dynamic Commodore just in behind us here and a pretty dejected Will Davison is out of the car. Just describe what's happened. You had such a good start to this weekend in the opening two races. Yeah, no, it's pretty disappointing, actually, especially for the guys. My uh, number one aim this weekend was to make the car home uh, straight, not bent like it is. And uh, first lap was a bit of Biff and Barge going on. And unfortunately, coming down into turn uh, 13, I think it was, the pack slowed up pretty heavily in front of me and I was just a little bit too late in the brakes. So I feel pretty bad for Steve Ellery, actually. I, I sort of turned him around, which was definitely not on purpose. So it's not a very good way to finish the weekend. Hard luck, Will. Good luck for Adelaide. Thanks, Will. And as a new boy... Paul Radisic, any idea on what happened with the car? Look, we had a, a slight touch. I got a good run coming out of uh, out of 10 and uh, got up Stevie and uh, and Davison. And just as I got to Davison, he'd come across and uh, I couldn't quite get out of it in time and we, we touched. So it's just done a little bit of damage on the front, so it's not worth... Um, Pressing on for uh, you know for an exhibition race. Changed the hole in new car. Looking to Adelaide, you happy? Yeah, look to come out of the box and you know put in the top ten and, and seventh on Friday. Very very pleased with it. And um, I mean yesterday's race was just a a debacle really. Um, but uh, you look know, very pleased with it. Looking forward to to Adelaide. We're going to have our first test day on the eleventh, and um, I'll be able to sort of fine tune it to what I like and uh, get on for Adelaide. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Dave.
Russell Ingle thought about going up the inside between turns 15 and 16 then on his teammate Marcus Ambrose, but it meant that he really didn't get the ideal entry exit off turn 16. Fastest man on the racetracks, Craig Lowndes, with a 159.5. Margin scaife to Ambrose is 0.8 of a second at the end of that last lap. And Scaife looks strong. Ambrose is just slightly on the defence with Russell Ingle. In fact, he just chased him around the road a little bit. And slowly but surely, uh, Lowndes is making it up the inside here of Jones. So slowly but surely, he's climbing up the field. And Jones is getting a bit closer to the back of his own teammate, John Bow. These two absolutely side to side on the run up to five. Eventually, Brad yields. Lowndes has got some pace at the moment, as indicated by that fastest lap. He is coming. One BOC Falcon out of the way. Something I wanted to get to earlier with Will Davison. As we know, the V8 supercar established drivers, as you see Glenn Seaton. Greg no, Ritter. Sorry, Greg Ritter again. He's had an eventful weekend, hasn't he? Poor old Greg Ritter. The established V8 supercar drivers don't like being pushed around by the newcomers, and the best thing Will Davison could do would be to go and make sure Stephen Ellery understands it wasn't intentional. Remember top, when Garth top. Tander first came in? <laughs> I do. The uh, top marks, though, for Will Davis and putting his hand up saying, oh, look, I outbreak myself and I feel bad for Steve Ellery. And he'll still, even if you admit guilt, you'll still have to front the stewards. Sometimes there'll be penalties issued. Jason Bright sliding his car through turn 12 there, so perhaps still not with the ideal car set up for the cat car. Scaife still in control, margin seesawing a little bit. Ambrose went through a phase where he looked a bit vulnerable. He settled down, perhaps he's trimmed the anti-roll bars in the car or the tyre pressures have normalised or perhaps made an alteration with brake bias. Whatever it may be, he's just settled down a little bit now. And we go back to this vigorous battle here between Jason Barguana in the Orcon entry and Jamie Wincup in the Tasman Motorsport Dodo internet entry. Greg. Rob Starr from HRT has got a wry little smile on his face at the moment. He said it was a pretty pumped up Mark Scaife that got in that car this morning. They went back to the dry setup that they had for Friday, which they said worked well, but they've just finessed it. I think you may find, Neil, they may have just softened that car up a fraction, and boy, it's working well for Mark at the moment. His last lap time was a 59.7, Ambrose a 9.5, and Marcus set the new fastest lap on the race on that lap, lap 5, 59.5218. Jason Barguana defending from Jamie Wincup. Barguana was very satisfied with his season last year. He was the second best Ford driver in the championship behind Marcus Ambrose. Of course, Ambrose the champion. Barguana finished eighth and was pleased with that, looking to go on with it in 2005. And he, like Lowndes, fought his way back from a long way back in the pack in race two. Now he has his hands full with another new name on the scene. Of course, Win Cup we know, he's been around for a few years, but we look forward to seeing what he's got in the 2005 V8 Supercar Championship Series. It's an important time for him in his career because he didn't have a good run with Gary Rogers Motorsport when he was there, he battled. And uh, sometimes when you come out the other side of those things and you've hardened up and not your two and another opportunity comes your way, you don't miss the break, that, that appears to be the situation. I mentioned at the start of the race that it was difficult to see from the angle whether it was cars 15 or 16 starting from pit lane. Clearly Rick Kelly's out there at the moment, so that was Garth Pander, as you mentioned before, Lee. It started from the pit lane just in front of Greg Murphy. Lowndes has left Jones and he's eating into John Bow. We'll see how that shapes up in a moment. Win Cup relentless on Barguana here. It's still Scaife with about half a second over Marcus Ambrose and Ingle right with his teammate, that's the top three. Then Bow, Lowndes, Jones, Bright, Barguana, Wincup, Kelly, these three we've been looking at. Behind them, it's the second Orcon Falcon. Mark Lark of the team principal will be very pleased with that performance. And then it's Jason Richards, Glenn Seaton, Stevie Richards and Cam McConville rounding out the top 15. And here is Lowndes now, the better electrical Triple Eight Falcon, right with John Bow. Mark gave margin to Marcus Ambrose, 0.8 of a second on the last lap. And he was two tenths quicker than Marcus, so it was a 59.6 for Scaife, for 59.8 for Marcus, 59.6 also for Russell Ingalls. So his pace remains good in his lounge. It was a two minute 0.5 lap for Craig in fifth position ahead of Brad Jones, behind John Bauer. There they are. Jason Bright next in the queue, and then a decent margin back to Jason Barguana and Jamie Wincup. And a change for position here. Stephen Richards battling with Glenn Seaton. Positions 12, 13, 14 is Cam McConville. Yeah, McConville looking for a way through on Glenn Seaton. He's right on the back of the West Point Ford. 
and it's a blue oval race at the moment. Seven of the top ten are Fords. The one that counts is the race leader, and that's a Holden for the Holden Racing Team, Mark Scaife. McConville, who qualified in the top ten, good performance, finished in the top ten in the first race, ran off in the second, and it's been hard work ever since. Greg. Paul Forgey, the number one man on car one for Marcus Ambrose, is not giving away too much at the moment. I said, is Marcus just going to hover there and have a crack at Mark Scaife towards the end of this race? He said, I'm not saying anything right now. They were stuck together yesterday, weren't they? Right to the end. Yeah, not much between those cars or drivers, and we know that we've seen in the past. Is there a position change up for grabs here? Wind Cup thinks about it, puts the car into clean air by doing so moves off the ideal race line but it does look like he's got a little bit of pace there's been a lot of change in the off season for the v8 supercars whether it be rules with drivers with teams sponsors etc and we will bring you right up to date and in depth in a fortnight's time when we go to adelaide for the first round of the championship of the clipsal 500 craig lounge intensifies the pressure now on john bow next lap Bow may fall to Craig Lowndes. He continues to push. This will be so refreshing for Lowndes just to feel that he's got a car now that he can challenge with, and he's doing that to John Bow. It's refreshing to fight for positions. He's fighting for a spot in the top four, and he's got it. It was pretty easy, and John just left the gate wide open for him. Didn't argue about it. Knows that right at the moment, in car number 12, he doesn't really have the car to fight with, so he left room for Craig, who just nipped up the inside with ease. He now goes to fourth position, so it's Scaife, Ambrose, Ingle, Lowndes, Bow, Jones, Bright, Bargwana, Wind Cup and Winterbottom. That's your top ten. Jason and Stephen Richards are 11th and 12th. Then Glenn Seaton, Camber Conville, Matthew White, Andrew Jones is 16. Tander, Davison, Morris, Kelly. That's the top 20. Greg, what do you have? Rick Kelly's car has come into the lane, one of the HSV dealer team Commodores, and this was not expected. This is not uh, a testing scenario for Rick. This is an unexpected overheating scenario with car 15. I'll come back when I've got more. And as you can see, Jason Barguana has lost the battle there with Jamie Wincup. And there's a report that Fluid is coming from the back of the Orcon Falcon. Actually, I... Big pardon, communication mistake there on my part there. Liquid from the back of the Kelly car. And there's Rick already out of the cockpit. Doing these races, Neil, is it good? Although it's not championship points, it's a bit of fun. It's good to clean the cobwebs out over the season. We'll get back to that thought in a moment as we hear more from Greg. Well, this was the car, you may recall, that was involved in that big accident at Bathurst with uh, with Jason Plato and John Cleland. It's taken a bit of finessing this weekend, getting it back on track, hasn't it, Rick? Yeah, we haven't had as many laps as we'd like. Um, just run a little bit warm, so we thought we'd bring it in and have the day off. Did it give you any warning? What, what prompted it to overheat, do you think? Uh, we're not sure. We haven't done many laps in the dry here. There's a few leaves in the front, so hopefully that's the cause. Good luck for Adelaide. Thank you. That's what I was going to say, Neil. It's good to have this event, yes, to, to have a good hit out, to get these problems out of the way before you get to the championship. Absolutely. You know, there's nothing like racing. You can test all day long, but this stuff is really where you get uh, under pressure and that's where you start to resolve your problems. A manoeuvre there by Wind Cup to go through on Barguana. Uh, what happens here is up around the northern part of the circuit where we're looking at the moment, you often do pick up a lot of leaves. It doesn't take much if your engine's running marginal for temperature to block off the air intake and just bump the water temp up a little bit and then it'll spit the water out. So rather than weld up an engine, you are much better off to park it. V8 supercar engine these days is an investment in the order of 100,000 odd Australian dollars. So you don't need to be a genius to work out that it's not good to press on if you've got a problem with one. Brad Jones has made some inroads on his teammate, John Bow. The two BOC Fords, and they're actually getting a look behind them at Jason Bright starting to make some ground as well. Last two laps though, time is running out. Will Lowndes be able to make any ground up on Russell Ingle? He's got a long way to go and time is running out. And will we see a move on Scaife from Marcus Ambrose in these closing laps? There's Lowndes. Roland Dane, the team principal for the better electrical team, will be pleased with this hit out today. We'll Though that one of the drivers, Stephen Ellery, is ended up. Mate. Last lap, have a drink. 
Mark Scaife's radio and really they've been very settled in these last couple of laps just watching their times Ambrose slightly ever so slightly slower than Scaife and Ingle but not a lot in it Mark's got a margin we're on the last lap as you can see and really it's all over unless he makes an unusual mistake Scaife Ambrose Ingle Lowndes Bow Jones Bright there's the order for Vodafone and uh, you asked the question Lee about the value and what you can learn out of this probably don't learn an awful lot that can be transferred with setup necessarily but you do get an important racing hit out it gets the team glued back together focused on the business of racing and not so much workshop focus as has been in the last few months and uh, certainly a valuable lesson if you like in preparation for the opening round of the championship it's a long and complicated championship this year particularly from a logistics standpoint with the cars teams darting from one side of the country to the other and overseas on a couple of occasions this so the way in which you approach the championship prepare for the championship have all of your spares and all of your ducks in a row if you like is going to be really critical to your success it'll be one thing to drive the car properly and to make sure that it's set up correctly and so forth but keeping it all organized behind the scenes is actually going to be quite a challenge for some of the teams and that will sort them out early on with a trip to Perth, a trip to New Zealand, a trip to China, a trip to Darwin. All that happens in the opening part of the championship so they'll need to be on their game. And in the years, the 10 years, the, the V8s have been coming to the Albert Park circuit in support of the Fosters Australian Formula One Grand Prix. We've never had three different race winners. There's always been a repeat winner. Someone's always dominated, whether it's been Ingle, whether it, it's been Scaife, whether it's been Radisic, whoever. We've never had three different winners. Kelly, Todd Kelly won the first, John Bow won the second, and Mark Scaife for the Holden Racing Team will win the third race in the Your Qantas V8 right Supercars. Scaife victorious over the two Stone Brothers Racing Falcons. Great relief for Holden Racing Team and for Mark after some difficult events that are well documented last year, but they've come out with fast cars this weekend. Clear indication that they'll have a terrific battle this year with Stone Brothers Racing. So there you have it. A good scrap early on, then they settled into a solid race pace. Scaife made the move on Ambrose for the lead and never looked back. Marcus ran close, but not close enough. As they come to the line, a very solid performance from the Stone Brothers Falcons, so too Craig Lowndes and the two Team BOC Fords of John Bow, Brad Jones, great work. Jason Bright, a good start to his new year with the new team, Ford Performance Racing in the Cat Ford. Jamie Wincup, is he a star of the future? We'll find out when we get to Adelaide. This was non-championship. It counts in two weeks' time. Mark Wanner and Winterbottom, both Orcon Fords, in the top ten. Mark Larkin, the team principal, nice start to the 2005 season. Jason Richards, Steve Richards, just outside the top ten. And Garth Tander rounding out the 15. More after this. Three races, three different winners in the Qantas V8 Supercars Spectacular and as a form guide to the rest of the season, hmm, some interesting trends there. Craig Lowndes showing some pace in his new team. Jamie Wincup, as Lee pointed out, very impressive. The Dodo team, Team Kiwi and Super Cheap seem to have their acts together, but who knows? Greg Rust is with the man who won the final race, Mark Scaife. Billy, I guess one of the trends that's come out of it is that the red team, Holden Racing Team, are strong. That's a great way to start the year, Mark. Well done. Well, look, we've been back uh, all weekend with that rusty, uh, you know, Todd qualified well. We both, uh, you know, in the first uh, first three cars, uh, our cars have gone well all weekend. It's a great sign for the Red Army to, uh, to, you know, to have these cars back where they should be. And that was a great battle again with Marcus. It was a great race yesterday and another one today. Rob Starr didn't give away too much during the race to me. He said, look, we went back to a, a dry setup that worked well on Friday, but we finessed it from there. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, look, a little bit. I mean, it was sort of a, a slightly... Uh, more wettish setup, but uh, but not much. And uh, I mean, when you when you know that the car's pretty good and you can wheel it out like that, I mean, it's a good sign. I mean, the things we learnt at the end of last year have really proved in invaluable. How much does this fire you up for Adelaide? Oh, it made it on. It's fantastic. I mean, uh, I'm very very proud of the guys, and I'm uh, I feel like I'm I'm back to driving as well as we've ever driven. Good on you. Look forward to it. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, man. Well, Marcus, even though yesterday was a wet race, did tyres become a big play in this race? Yeah, we ran on the same tyres all weekend, apart from that wet race yesterday. So, yeah, the tyres pretty good. I'm not sure what Mark was driving on out there, but, uh, you know, he could have been on the old tyres too, who knows. But it was a great race, good scrap, and, um, you know, it's just great to get back behind the wheel again.
How do you see things going in Adelaide now with the red cars showing some good performance? Yeah, well, the pressure's not on yet, so um, you know, let's wait and see. I'm sure there's going to be some players in the back of the field come through and be a factor at Clipsal. I'm sure Mark's rebounded well from last year. He's really looks like he's driving well. He seems pretty happy with life too. So, um, you know, I expect a big challenge from Mark and um, this bloke over here too, Rusty. He's um, he's fired up. You've got a big smile on your face. See you in Adelaide. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yeah, Russell Ingle is very fired up. There's no two ways about that. He's had a good giggle with the Caltex crew here. Over summer, you've worked very, very hard, Russell. Top start to the year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I I've, haven't done half the work the boys have done. Brand new car. First shootout this weekend. And uh, it's an absolute gem. It's a really good car. I think we've got better speed than last year. Car feels brilliant straight out the gate. So to come out and be competitive amongst this group, really pleased. As your engineer said to me on the quad, he said, hey, it's not just that. We've also sat down and looked over data and a number of things. And the, one of the, the crucial elements that I think that came out is that you're dead keen to beat that bloke in the blue car, aren't you? Well, don't worry about that. Like, everyone thinks we're here to beat, you know, all the uh, HRTs and all the other of the world. Mate, I'm just out to beat Marcus as well, especially he's only here another 12 months. So, mate, I've got to kick his backside this time. So, look, full credit to all the crew. And uh, make, make, make no mistake, I am a lot of uh, a lot of VBs this time. So we'll get back in the old Riviera and we'll have a bit of a drink. Good on you. Thanks, mate. All right, after the break, we'll go from these guys, people who have their fingers on the pulse to people who have their hands firmly on their steering wheels. The BMW Celebrity Challenge coming up.